The Basic Conditions of Employment Act, or the BCEA, a workers' umbrella. So, South African labor laws are amongst the best in the world today. As our constitution, we've got the best constitution in the world, as so I've heard. Let me just redo that line, oh my god. Okay, third time lucky. Okay, that, that's not too bad. So, as the constitution has established labor law rights very strongly, and over time, trade unions have also been able to provide further input into labor laws. Now, at the center of labor legislation is the Basic Conditions of Employment Act, the BCEA of 1997, way back when. Now, neither the employer nor the worker can ignore the conditions outlined in the BCEA, whoopsie, the BCEA, especially with regard to the regulations of a job contract as stipulated in the act. Now, every employer is legally obliged to provide all workers with a contract no later than the first day of employment okay so it is the obligation of the employer okay they must do it employers are therefore well advised to enter into a job contract with the worker and it is also a fact that very few workers actually read the job contract before signing it i mean how many of you just click well tick that box you know the t's and c's you know that little box that comes up okay like i'm just gonna tick it uh because i don't want to read the terms and conditions here of this contract you know i'm downloading whatever app from the game store play store whatever it is you know you guys just take it um same same kind of vibe even though south african labor laws are fairly progressive child labor for instance continues to exist in a variety of labor sectors in the country therefore it is important that employers have a good not just a good a thorough complete understanding of the bcea to ensure that they operate in a manner that is fully compliant with labor laws it's imperative so 2.1 define the term job contract so a contract in general, it's a legally binding agreement between the employer and the worker. So it's it's legally binding between the employer and the employee. 2.2. State two ways in which trade unions could assist workers in addressing non-compliance with working conditions. So trade unions, they've got employee interests at heart. They protect employees. They could conduct regular surveys with their members. So just surveys just to see how their members are doing. And they could provide methods for workers to report any non-compliance or better channels of communication. They can ensure that workers report non-compliance without fear of victimization. They could organize legal strikes, protests, mass action, picketing, whatever it is, without putting workers in a place where they are victimized. So yeah, just creating or ensuring that methods are in play here. They've got some kind of recourse. They've got remedies in difficult situations. Explain why the BCEA of 1997 protects underage children from working in a formal work environment. Well, child labor is not legal in, in general, but you know, depending on the industry, like the film industry, you know, sometimes you need kids to act that are like, you know, five or six years old. Um, but more importantly, the responsibilities of a formal job may just add stress to a child's life as they may not be emotionally ready to deal with the failures and challenges of tasks. And a formal working environment may expose underage children to very inappropriate situations or unlawful activities. It endangers their health and safety. So just in terms of responsibility and just inappropriate situations. In absent. Okay, inappropriate situations. 2.4, how could an employer assist a young worker to minimize the consequences of misreading or not reading a job contract? Well, employers could ensure that the lawyers who draw up these contracts make use of simple English or they simplify the language of instruction, whatever it is. And in South Africa and corporate South Africa, English is the way that we level the playing fields, you know, we've got a really big Afrikaans population, Zulu, Osa, Sepedi, Chivenda populations, and so on and so on. A nice way to level that playing field is just, you know, everyone just speak English, okay? That's a nice way to, to bridge everything. It's a, a universal language, not a good thing. It's because of their, you know, colonial mark, the English, you know, the British, where, where didn't they colonize? So yeah, you know, they, they don't have an Independence Day because, well, they colonized everyone. So we all have Independence Days. It's crazy. Anyway, not a history lesson, but I'll make some history videos soon for you guys. Yeah, so just simplify the, the language at play and allow workers to read their contracts at home or create a favorable environment or atmosphere for workers to read and sign their contracts. 
co contracts and provide electronic copies of it as well. So just create a, a, a nice environment when it's time to sign it. Okay, you don't pressure them to do anything. I'm just gonna write nice and viral. 2.5, assess two advantages for an employer who provides workers with a job contract. Two advantages. Well, let's do 2.5 at the top here. You just, you minimize incidents of non-compliance, basically, by workers, an employer, well, sorry, non-compliance by workers that an employer has to deal with. And it sends a clear message to workers of their legal rights. It also helps the employer establish the necessary structure and order in the workplace, and it thereby reduces these possible risks and possible penalties as well that the employer may incur. So just structure and order. And um, just a few other ones. It just, in general, protects the business or company through these policies that are included in the contract, and it reduces possibilities of later legal claims. So ultimately, these big companies and corporations, they want to save their own skin. Let's take a look at 2.6. Examine why it is important for a worker to review a job contract and in each answer also indicate how reviewing it may benefit the worker. So we need three good points here and they must be clearly substantiated as well. So 2.6, you may realize that, well, when we say you, uh, the em employee, the employee or you may realize that your job description has actually changed and you're taking on tasks that were not in your initial job description. And maybe you're not being compensated accordingly for it. So you're just getting less money. The working conditions of workers may need to improve as well, since it may not be in accordance with applicable labor law. So conditions, they must improve. It needs to be in accordance with the BCEA. It needs to be, well, healthy, safe environment. The company may upgrade equipment uh, in order to meet 21st century tech advances. And as a worker, uh, you may need to be upskilled. So if they're using like fancier or newer tech, you may need to go for some kind of training program so you can upskill yourself so you know how to utilize the equipment. So that's the first point, second point, and third point. And that's how you go about answering this question. So give me a nice punchy point and then substantiate it a little bit. Okay, and that is it for that little long question.